Welcome back, my friends. Big Bill Anderson's Life Tours. I'm here at Forest Lawn uh, Memorial Cemetery here at Hollywood Hills. Once again, paying my respects to one of my favorite actors, a man I saw in many movies. Actually, it's a man I met in an airport, in Burbank Airport one time, shook his hand, took a picture with him, but the picture didn't come out because it was in the old days where you had to advance your film and a roll of film, and I did it incorrectly. So my picture with Telly never came out. It's the only chance I had to meet the man. It's really honored. Uh, but Telly Savalas is who I'm here to pay my respects to. And he was in so many of my favorite movies. The Dirty Dozen I just watched on television uh, just a couple nights ago. Uh, so many of the Scalp Hunters with Burt Lancaster. Kelly's Heroes with Clint Eastwood. Uh, I'm also going to pay my respects to his brother, George Savalas, who is just over around the corner from here. Uh, buried in the same cemetery. George Savalas was an actor and Telly's uh, brother, and he was in the Kojak television series with Telly Savalas and in many of Telly's movies. So I'm going to tell you more about the life story of Mr. Telly Savalas, the man that became more famous after he shaved his head than when he had hair. And stay with me, my friends, the life story of Mr. Telly Savalas. The second of five children, Telly Savalas was born Aristoteles Savalis on January 21, 1922, in Garden City, New York, to Greek American parents Christina, a New York City artist who was a native of Sparta, and Nick Savalas, a Greek restaurant owner. Savalas initially only spoke Greek when he entered grade school but learned English. He attended he attended Cobbett Junior High School in Lynn, Massachusetts. He won a spelling bee there in 1934, though through an oversight, he did not receive his prize until 1991, when the Boston Herald newspaper and local school principal decided to award it to him. Savalas entered Siwinhaka High School in Floral Park, New York, and graduated in 1940. After graduation from high school, he worked as a lifeguard, but on one occasion was unsuccessful at rescuing a man from drowning, an event that would haunt Savalas for the rest of his life. When he entered Columbia University School of General Studies, Savalas took courses including English language, radio, and psychology, graduating in 1946. Savalas also served three years 1943 to 1946 in the U.S. Army during World War II in which he received a Purple Heart. After the war, he worked for the U.S. State Department as host of Your Voice of America series, then at ABC News. In 1950, Savalas hosted a radio show called The Coffee House in New York City. Savalas began an, as executive director and then senior director of the news special events at ABC. He then became an executive producer for the Gillette Cavalcade of Sports, where he gave Howard Cosell his first job in television. In fall of 1959, Savalas directed Scott Vincent and Howard Cosell in Report to New York, WABC's TV's first local TV news program. Savalas did not consider acting as a career until asked if he could recommend an actor who could do a European accent. He did, but as the friend in question could not go, Savalas himself went to cover for his friend and ended up being cast on and Bring Home a Baby, an episode of Armstrong Circle Theater in January of 1958. He appeared on two more episodes of the series in 1959 and 1960, one acting alongside a young Sidney Pollock, who would go on to become an Academy Award-winning director. He was also in a version of The Iceman Cometh. Savalas quickly became in much demand as a guest star on TV shows, including Sunday Showcase, Diagnosis Unknown, Dow Hour of Great Mysteries, an adaptation of The Cat and the Canary, 
Naked City alongside Claude Rains, The Witness playing Lucky Luciano in one episode and Al Capone in another, The United States Steel Hour, and The Aquanauts. He was a regular on the short-lived NBC series Acapulco in 1961 with Ralph Taker and James Coburn. Savalas made his film debut in Mad Dog Cow in 1961, playing a cop. His work had impressed fellow actor Burt Lancaster, who arranged for Savalas to be cast in the John Frankenheimer-directed The Young Savages, again playing a cop in 1961. In one of his most acclaimed performances, Savalas reunited with Lancaster and Frankenheimer for Birdman of Alcatraz in 1962, where he was nominated for the Academy Award and Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actor. The same year, he appeared as a private detective in Cape Fear, directed by J. Lee Thompson, whom Savalas would work with in future films, and The Interns, reprising role from the latter film in The New Interns in 1964. Savalas also guest starred in a number of TV series during the decade, including The New Breed, The Detectives, Ben Casey, The Twilight Zone, The Episode of The Living Doll, and Arrest and Trial, among others. Savalas, already at a high stage of male pattern baldness, shaved his head to play Pontius Pilate in The Greatest Story Ever Told in 1965, and kept his head shaven for the rest of his life. He reunited with J. Lee Thompson in John Goldfarb, Please Come Home in 1965, and was one of many names in Genghis Khan, also in 1965. In 1966, Telly Savalas starred as the Ruthless Sergeant in Bo Jest. He was part of an all-star cast in The Dirty Dozen in 1967, playing Archer Maggot, the worst of the dozen, in a role Jack Palance turned down. Also cast in that movie was Lee Marvin, Clint Walker, Donald Sutherland, Charles Bronson, Ernest Borgnine, and Robert Ryan, and George Kennedy, amongst many other great stars of that film. Totally one of my favorite movies of all time. He reunited with Burt Lancaster and Sidney Pollack in the Western The Scalp Hunters in 1968, which also starred Shelley Winters and was also featured in the comedy Buena Sera, Mrs. Campbell, starring the beautiful Gina Lola Brigida in 1968 noted as one of his favorite roles. And he was in the all-star action movie McKenna's Gold in 1969 with Gregory Peck, his third film for J. Lee Thompson. Savalas attributed his success to his complete ability to be himself on a set. After continued supporting roles in films such as The Man from the Diner's Club, Love is a Ball, and Johnny Cool, all in 1963. Savalas' first leading role in film was in the British crime comedy Crooks and Coronets, 1969. The same year he appeared in the James Bond movie On Her Majesty's Secret Service, playing Ernst Stavro Blofeld. He continued to appear in films during the 1970s including one of my personal favorites, Kelly's Heroes in 1970, starring Clint Eastwood and also Telly's brother, George Savalas, and Don Rickles and Donald Sutherland. Fantastic movie. He also starred in Clay Pigeon in 1971, in addition to several European features, such as Violent City, with Charles Bronson, with Sally Field in Mongo's Back in Town in 1971, A Town Called Bastard, 
Horror Express with Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee. A Reason to Live, A Reason to Die. Redneck. And he reunited with Christopher Lee in the 1976 thriller Killer Force. Also appeared in Peter Himes' Capricorn One in 1978. Savalas also wrote, directed, and starred in the 1977 independent thriller Beyond Reason. However, the film was not released in cinemas. It was only made available on home media in 1985. Where Telly Savalas really rose to fame was in the Kojak television series and the movies that prompted this fantastic show. Kojak series ran from 1973 to 1978, and then again from 1985 to 1990. Telly Savalas first played Lieutenant Theodore Theo Kojak in the TV movie The Marcus Nelson Murders on CBS in 1973, which was based on the real-life Career Girls murder case. Kojak was a bald New York City detective with a fondness for lollipops and whose tagline was who loves you baby he also liked to say everybody should have a little greek in them although the lollipop gimmick was added in order to indulge his sweet tooth savalas also smoked heavily on screen throughout the first season's episodes the lollipops had apparently given him three cavities and were part of an unsuccessful effort by kojak and Savalas himself to curb his smoking. The critic, Clive, the critic Clive James explained the lead actor's appeal as Kojak. Telly Savalas can make bad slang sound like good slang, and good slang sound like poetry. It isn't what he is so much as the way he talks that gets you to tune in. Writer David Shipman later wrote, Kojak was sympathetic to outcasts and ruthless with social predators. The show maintained a high quality to the end, mixing tension with some laughs and always anxious to tackle civic issues. Kojak aired on CBS for five seasons from October 24, 1973 until March 18, 1978, with 118 episodes produced. The role won Savalas an Emmy and two Golden Globes for Best Actor in a Drama Series. Co-stars on the show included Savalas's younger brother, George, as Detective Stavros, a sensitive, wild-haired, quiet, comedic foil to Kojak's streetwise humor in an otherwise dark, dramatic series. Kevin Dobson as Kojak's trusted younger partner, Detective Bobby Crocker, whose on-screen chemistry with Savalas was a success story of the 1970s television, and Dan Frazier as Captain Frank McNeil. In 1982, at a celebrity softball game at Pepperdine University, I met Kevin Dobson. I spent a few minutes with Kevin discussing my love of the Kojak show and his role as Detective Bobby Crocker. He was an extremely nice guy to talk to. Of course, at this time his, in his career, he had moved on to Knott's Landing. But it was still nice to meet this young man. Due to a decline in the ratings, the series of Kojak was canceled by CBS in 1978. Savalas and Frazier were the only, only actors to appear in all 118 episodes. Savalas was unhappy about the show's demise but got the chance to reprise the Kojak persona in several television movies starting in 1985. The first film, subtitled The Bellarius File, and broadcast in February of 1985, reunited Savalas with several of his co-stars from the series. Younger brother George, Dan Frazier, Mark Russell, who played Detective Saperstein, and Vince Conti, Detective Rizzo, this marked those actors' final appearance in the Kojak franchise. A further six Kojak TV movies were produced 
titled The Pride of Justice in 1987, Ariana and Fatal Flaw, both in 1989, Flowers for Maddie, It's Always Something, with Kevin Dobson reprising his role as Bobby Crocker, now an assistant district attorney, and None So Blind in 1990. Savalas was part of an all-star cast in the movie Escape to Athena, Beyond the Poseidon Adventure, both in 1979, and Cannonball Run 2 in 1984, and continued to appear in a number of film and television guest roles during the 1980s, including Border Cop and Faceless in 1988. The series Tales of the Unexpected and two episodes each of The Love Boat and The Equalizer. The latter series was produced by James McAdams, who had also produced Kojak. Savalas was the lead actor in the TV movie Hellinger's Law, 1981, which was originally planned as a pilot for a series, but ultimately never materialized. In 1992, he appeared in three episodes of the TV series, The Commish. His son-in-law was one of the producers. This was Savalas' final television role. He would appear in two further feature films before his death, Mind Twister in 1993 and the posthumous release Backfire in 1995. I do believe that many people would never know that Telly Savalas was also a successful singer, having appeared in five albums during the 70s. As a singer, Savalas had chart success. His spoken word version of Bread's If, produced by Snuff Garrett, reached number one in both the UK and Ireland in March of 1975, and his version of Don Williams' Some Broken Hearts Never Men topped the charts in Switzerland in February of 1981. He worked with composer and producer John Kakakfus on many albums, including Telly, 1974, and Who Loves Your Baby, 1976. In the late 1970s, Savalas narrated three UK travelogues titled Telly Savalas Looks at Portsmouth, Telly Savalas Looks at Aberdeen, and Telly Savalas looks at Birmingham. In the 1980s and early 90s, Savalas appeared in commercials for the Players Club Gold Card. In 1982, along with Bob Hope and Linda Evans, he participated in the world premiere television ad producing Diet Coke to Americans. On October 28, 1987, Savalas hosted Return to the Titanic Live a two-hour television special broadcast from Paris. He also hosted the 1989 videos UFOs and Channeling. He received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 1983. In 1999, TV Guide ranked him number 18 on its 50 greatest stars of all time. Savalas was married three times. In 1948, after his father's death from bladder cancer, Savalas married his college sweetheart, Catherine Nicolaitis. Daughter Christina, named after his mother, was born in 1950. In 1957, Catherine filed for divorce. She urged him to move back to his mother's house during that same year. While Savalas was going broke, he founded the Garden City Theater Center in his native Garden City. While working there, he met Marilyn Gardner, a theater teacher. They married in 1960. Marilyn gave birth to daughter Penelope in 1961. A second daughter, Candace, was born in 1963, and they divorced in 1974 after a long separation. In January of 1969, while working on the movie On Her Majesty's Secret Service, Savalas met actress Sally Adams, billed as Danny Sheridan, one of Blofeld's Angels of Death, a small-time actress 25 years his junior whose daughter from a previous relationship 
is Nicolette Sheridan. Savalas later moved in with Sally, who gave birth to their son Nicholas Savalas on September 24, 1973. Although Savalas and Sally Adams never legally married, she went by the name Sally Savalas. They stopped living together in December of 1978. She filed a palimony lawsuit against him in 1980, demanding support not only for herself and their son, but also for Nicolette. In 1977, during the last season of Kojak, Savalas met Ju Julie Hovland, a travel agent from Minnesota. The couple were married from 1984 until his death and had two children, Christian, an entrepreneur, singer, and songwriter, and Ariana, an actress and singer and songwriter. Savalas was close friends with actor John Aniston and was godfather to his daughter Jennifer Aniston, a successful TV and film star. Savalas held a degree in psychology and was a world-class poker player who finished 21st at the main event in 1992 World Series of Poker. He was also a motorcycle racer and a lifeguard. His other hobbies and interests included golfing, swimming, reading romantic books, watching football, traveling, collecting luxury cars, and gambling. He loved horse racing and bought a racehorse with movie director and producer Howard Koch, naming the horse Telly's Pop. It won several races in 1975, including the Norfolk Stakes and Del Mar Futurity. In his capacity as producer for Kojak, he gave many stars their first break, as Burt Lancaster did for him years earlier. He was considered by those who knew him to be generous, graceful, and a compassionate man. He was also a strong contributor to the Greek Orthodox roots through the St. Sophia and St. Nicholas Cathedrals in Los Angeles, and was the sponsor of bringing electricity in the 1970s to his ancestral home, Iriakos, Greece. Savalas had a minor physical handicap in that his left index finger was deformed. This deformed digit was often indicated on screen. The Kojak episode Conspiracy of Fear in which close-ups of Savalas holding his chin in his hand clearly showed the per permanently bent finger. In 1993, Savalas appeared on an Australian TV show, The Extraordinary, with a paranormal tale where he talked about an experience that he could not explain. After Savalas reprised his Kojak role in the 1980s, he began to lose close relatives. His brother, George Savalas, who played Stavros in the original series, died in 1985 of leukemia at the early age of 60. At this time, I'm going to take you across the street and show you George Savalas' gravesite, and then we will return back here to Telly's. Okay, my friends, we've already been to Telly Savalas' grave. Now I'm standing at his brother, George Savalas. Telly! Is buried just right over in that section right there, just across the street, maybe I'd say about 200, 300 yards away from his brother George here. But I wanted to show you George Savalas' grave. He was a great character actor. And thank God Telly took care of his brother, put him in a lot of his TV shows, movies, that sort of thing. So my friends, we're here at, at George's grave. Telly's mother, Christina, who had always been his best friend, supporter, and devoted parent, died in 1988. Her burial location is unknown. Later that year, Savalas was diagnosed with transitional cell cancer of the bladder. Telly Savalas died on January 22, 1994, just one day after his 72nd birthday, of complications of cancer of the bladder and prostate at the Sheridan Universal Hotel in Universal City, California. He had lived at the Sheridan in Universal City for 20 years, becoming such a fixture at the hotel that a bar is renamed Telly's after Telly Savalas. 
Savalas is interred here at the George Washington section of Forest Lawn Hollywood Hills Cemetery in Los Angeles. His funeral was held at St. Sophia Greek Orthodox Church and was attended by his third wife, Julie, and his brother, Gus. His first two wives, Catherine and Marilyn, also attended with their own children. The mourners included Angie Dickinson, Nicolette Sheridan, Jennifer Aniston, his goddaughter, Kevin Sorbo, Sally Adams, Frank Sinatra, Don Rickles, and several of Savalas' Kojak co-stars, including Kevin Dobson, Vince Conti, and Dan Frazier. Buried next to him here is his brother, Constantine, and also his first wife. So my friends, I wanted to bring you here and pay my respects to Mr. Telly Savalas, truly one of the great actors of Hollywood. He was a no-nonsense actor, and you knew when Telly Savalas was in a movie, you were really going to see something. And it's an honor to stand here at his grave and pay my respects to this man. So if you like this video, my friends, please like, share, subscribe. If you haven't done so already, ring the notification bell and you'll be alerted for future videos. And at this time, this is Big Bill Anderson's Life Tours saying, Adios, amigos.